welcome to the video welcome to the channel we have a modern warfare 2 rank play title video today we're talking about the best settings to run in rank play if you are new welcome hit that subscribe button i upload two videos every week every tuesday and friday and if you're returning welcome back go ahead and like the video on your way in also check out my guys over at waves custom but more on them later on let's jump right into the video so before we get into the visual settings, I want to take a look at the controller settings. Obviously everything up to here will most likely be personal preference, sensitivity, etc. But I'm sure most of you guys will probably have these left on default for the most part. Let's go over in advanced target aim assist. Obviously you want this on. I personally like the black ops aim assist type the best. I did hear that this got a nerf since launch, but in my personal opinion, black ops and default are probably the best options as far as aim assist Aim response curve type. I recommend dynamic or standard dynamic seems to give you the strongest aim assist along with the black ops aim assist type. This one right here is super important inputs dead zone. Everything else is irrelevant. Scroll down to left and right trigger. Make sure these are both at 0.00. This will allow you to ADS faster and shoot faster when you're pulling your left and right triggers. Also, you're going to want to go on the interface go to color customization. Everything else, once again, personal preference, but make sure the enemies are a color that you know you will not miss when the diamonds appear over the enemy heads a lot of times if somebody is on a head glitch or even in just a little bit of a cruddy spot you might not see them so it's super important to go ahead and make sure you make the enemy colors something that you know will cut through things on the map so i don't recommend doing something such as black brown or green because there are plenty black brown and green surfaces and or structures on the map in this game now, as far as graphics and the screen refresh rate is going to be whatever you are able to run your monitor at most efficiently. I am using a 360 hertz monitor. Some of you may only be using a 60 hertz monitor or maybe a 244 hertz monitor. So go ahead and just make sure you match that up with whatever hardware you are using. And for custom frame rate limit, you could either use custom or unlimited. Once again, try to keep it relative to whatever your monitor refresh rate is in the out of focus frame rate limit. I recommend running this at 30. Brightness, obviously this is personal preference and you can go ahead and calibrate that to whatever fits your monitor or TV the best. So let's get into the quality. I highly recommend running your quality presets on minimum for ranked play. This will allow you to have the fastest frame rates possible because if you raise them up to balanced or ultra, it's going to put a little bit more strain on your computer. And I also want you to ask yourself this question. Do you want to play good or do you want your game to look good? And subjectively, you can't even really tell the big difference between minimum and ultra. Sure, there's a difference, but there is not a big difference. And if you absolutely just don't want to run minimum, I recommend running basic. Once again, these two settings will put the least strain on your computer. Piggyback in off of that. If you don't want to run everything on very low and low or as low as possible, try not to go past normal or medium, depending on what the case is for the textures and detail. Bullet impact sprays off, persistent damage layers off, shader quality low, tessellation off, terrain memory. I don't think this does much visually or does too much strain on your system. So you can go ahead and adjust that to your liking. Streaming quality low, volumetric quality low, deferred physics quality off. This sets the physics quality of water. So while playing ranked play, the only map that has water is obviously hydro. Now I will say in shadow and lighting, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Once again, I try and run everything as low as possible, but if you think you can see something a tad bit easier while adjusting some of these settings, by all means, go ahead and adjust that to your liking. Screen space reflections off. This sets the quality of screen space reflections of in-game graphics when looking at a certain angle on reflective surfaces. Static reflection quality low. Choose quality of static reflection images. Weather grid volume sets the quality of weather effects applied to the dynamic objects. Post processing effects. Nvidia reflex low latency. I have this on. Low latency mode is enabled and optimizing system latency. Some of you may want to run the on plus boost setting. Low latency mode is now enabled and optimizing system latency. Additionally, GPU clock frequencies are kept high in CPU bound cases. This can reduce latency, but will increase GPU power draw. I've experienced things running just a little bit rough while running Nvidia low latency on on plus boost depth of field off. Out of focus blur effect is disabled. If you want this on, simulates camera lens. Out of focus regions appear blurry. I personally find this a bit distracting. And if you aren't aiming directly at an enemy, this can affect your vision and can possibly cost you an engagement. Motion blur 
obviously you want this off weapon motion blur obviously you want that off as well once again these two settings are very distracting and can cost you some very important engagements film grain you want this turned all the way off as well and as far as field of view this is pretty much how close you are sitting to your monitor or tv i do think i sit farther away from my monitor than most players i would say most people will probably recommend you run your field of view at 120 fov but once again keep in mind the main purpose of this is how close you are sitting to your tv or monitor so go ahead and adjust that accordingly ads field of view affected this one is super important as well weapon field of view make this wide if you are running this on narrow or default, this will add some more screen vibration that you do not want once again, and possibly cause you to miss some shots. And in camera, first person camera movement, by default, this will be set to 100. Lower this to 50%, which is least. Again, this will minimize a lot of that camera vibration or camera shakiness while you are shooting your weapon. So make sure both of these are at least. Before we duck out of here, check out my guys over at Waves Customs. Use Waves Custom Inus for the gym playing and recording music and of course gaming get waves custom ears fitted for your ears only just by scanning your ears with your smartphone both iphone and android they offer a damn good product and a one-of-a-kind experience for an absolutely reasonable price check these guys out you won't regret it i promise if you made it to the end of the video thank you for sticking around i greatly appreciate it if you know of some settings that maybe i missed or some settings that you know that are kind of under the radar drop them down in the comment section i would love to hear from you but that is what we're going to call it for today hopefully you got some value out of this if you like what you see if you like what you hear go ahead and subscribe like and share once again i upload two videos a week every tuesday and friday subscribe for more call of duty content and overall gaming content all y'all take care and i'm out Yeah, he's probably just gonna play time. Planting bomber alpha. All saber, device is set. Let's go! This round is over.